Hello everyone, today is Thursday, April 15th, 2021, and this is the Week and Charts. I'm sure I thank all you guys and girls for being here. It looks like we did a little bit better job of getting the, the word out on the show, but we still need to work a little bit more on that. And by the way, if you register for one, you should be registered forever because I put a show out in like 2021 or 2022, something like that. 2021, it's hard to believe it's 2021, isn't it? <laughs> I couldn't believe my passport expired. I'm like, geez, I thought, you know, it's like last time I got a passport, I'm like, I'll be dead by the time this thing expires. So what can we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, I have a lot to say about that toward the end of the show. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep your questions relative to the slides, and then when we get to the live charts, you can ask about anything you want. That's just so my ADD doesn't kick in. Your favorite stock pitch, you know, the rules there. Just ask about one at a time. You can ask about as many as you want. We'll get through as many as possible. And lately, we've had a little bit smaller crowd, so it should not be a problem should be like it tomorrow. I want to talk a little bit about all coins and then I want to follow up on some IPO stuff that we talked about last week. And I want to talk specifically with the IPOs about trading the buy at B. And as I was working on my slides tonight, I thought of a lot of little things that would be fodder for research. And I'm going to bring that to you in just a few seconds. There's a claim screen, as you know, you can lose money trading ours. I'll sum it up. All predictions about the future. A lot of stuff now between now and then. That comes from my buddy Greg Morris. It's not exactly how I said it, but close enough. Keep it PG-13, I guess. All right, I want to follow up on IPOs. Last week, we talked a lot about where you should set stops. One of you guys had jumped in. Geo, George, had jumped uh, jumped in with both feet on IPOs, and he bought ZH, Simar, and ALHC. And if you want to learn about where I set the stops on those or where a plausible place for stock would be. I ended up buying all three of them, by the way, and I'll flesh it out in one second. But anyway, if you're more on setting stops on IPOs, go in and watch last week's Dave Landers Week in Charts on that. Uh, you can get it on my YouTube channel or my website, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Dave Lander. If you're getting something out of these videos, by the way, and you like them, then like them. And if you don't like them, go have no fun somewhere else. I heard that YouTube's getting rid of the unlike. Anyway, buy a B pattern, as you know, one, two, three, four, five. We don't get long until the close of the five bar. So something like coin, which I will talk about in one second. Coinbase, it's only on day two now, so there's no reason to rush out and buy it just yet. Now, again, the high, if the high is set on day one, then let's just back this up, up a little bit. If the high is set on day one for the week, then you have to buy not only at a new closing high, but also above that high. Here's day two, it took out that closing high. I'm sorry, it took out the prior day's high, day one high. So that rule is no longer in effect. We just go, we're just going to buy on a new closing high. And like I said last week, technically it was a signal on this day. I didn't think the range was enough, and I also didn't think that the signal was strong enough, and, and I don't even know if I saw it, to be frank with you. But on the following day, I did see it, and I liked it then a lot, lot more, especially since it closed well above the highest close for the first week, and it also began to expand in range, at least on a daily bar, and started looking pretty darn good. But what happened? The next day, it just absolutely imploded, you know, womp, womp. So I actually stopped out of this in my most active trading account. It's kind of interesting. I have an IRA, which is a little less active. I'm still taking the swing trades and working, in, working them into intermediate term and hopefully longer term trades. But I do a lot less of the day trading because like if I go in an IRA, and I said the word day trading, so I got to be careful. It's like intraday trading. There's a difference. But day trading, for lack of a better word, or probably the more accurate word, if I go in and make two or three day trades and do that a few days in a row, and then I have a bunch of open positions on, before you know it, my margin gets eaten up with the T plus two or T plus three rule, whatever it is nowadays. And that, that kind of taps a break on my trading right there, but it's kind of surprising. Now, every now and then I get really hot and do really, really well with the intraday trades, but lately I haven't, uh, truth be told. And then 
I noticed my IRA and cash accounts are doing better than my more active accounts. But anyway, in this more active account, I just didn't feel like sticking with the position. I knew I should probably give it a little bit more wiggle room. And what's kind of interesting is I, I kind of heard in the back of my mind the quote that Tom McClellan once told me from his late mother, Mary McClellan. Everyone uses timing in their trading. Some people buy when they have money. Some people sell when they need money and others use far more sophisticated methods. And that's a quote that sticks with me all the time. And every time I'm doing something emotional or like in this particular case, I'm like, oh, geez, you know, and it actually much worse than our oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I dropped uh, I dropped one or two of these little little uh, fellas here. I don't know if it'll come up on the screen. Here it is. Anyway, I said, you know what the heck with this thing? I tend to think that IPOs should really take off soon from the buy B pattern, and I'll flesh that out in a little more detail further in the show. But I think probably the main reason I stopped out was I just didn't want any more coinage on this account that I've been kind of having some difficulties with the intraday trading lately, and that was probably one of the big reasons why I decided to get out. And then, of course, the next day it begins to reverse. Didn't do a whole lot, but then it began to rally in earnest. And I, in my cash account, my bigger cash account, I sold half there. I did not stop out when it pulled back. If you go in and watch last week's presentation, the stop was probably a little bit further below that low on that. And anyway, so I sold half yesterday and so far so good and you know of course in perfect hindsight it would have been great to hold on for one more day i did tell one client to make sure he what's uh linda rasky saying feed the ducks while they're quacking so when you see a market start going straight up it's probably a good time to go ahead and bail out on some of your shares so remember we talked about zh last week one day one and you could see on day two, day three, and day four, it did not take out that day one high. So day one so far has set the high for the week. So the day one rule is in effect. It not only must close at a new closing high, which is fairly close to the high right here on day one, but it also must close above the day one high. And as you can see, it did. And I bought it on that close. And you could see that it didn't do a whole lot at first. And then what happened? It came back in and stopped me out. And <laughs> it's like these coaches on TV before they had the mask. It's like, why do they keep saying something about their mother and father when you know <laughs> they're aggravated with the referee? Anyway, so I got stopped out on that one. Probably dropped an F-bomb knowing me. But I looked at it and said, you know what? If I was just seeing this, this is after the close, obviously. This is the first deep retracement in IPO. Great pattern of trade. It ran from six or so up to nine and change. That's about a 50% move. And then it pulled back from that. Nice little pullback. First deep retracement. Great pattern of trade in IPOs. And two days later, I trigger in. And so I got long again. And so far, so good. Let's not start kissing each other just yet. But one thing that I've noticed, and I'm going to flesh this out in a little more detail in a few minutes, is sometimes with the buy a B pattern, if they begin to fail, just go ahead and bail out and look to re-enter. Now, I don't actually do that, but I think that was probably in the back of my head on that SimRush trade, SEMR. I was kind of thinking about that, and it's something I haven't put into practice. Uh, nor do I know whether or not I, I will actually put it in practice, but it does seem to be a little fodder for research, and that'll make more sense in a few minutes. But I rebought this one at this level here. Georgie, you here? Did you stop out of these? You were uh, you had texted me, private messaged me on some of these. And that's where last week's show came from, by the way. Now ALHC, pretty obvious buy be there. Day one, day here we go. Day one, you could see. Day two's high was below it, but on day three, it took out the day one high. So that rule is no longer in effect. It just has to close at a new closing high. Day four made a new closing high. So on day five, it closes above that high, and it did. 
I went ahead and bought on the close. And let's see what happens. Pulls back a little bit. And so far, so good. It's beginning to take off a little bit in here. Now, we did have this one down day here, and that's where I think this possible bailing out when these buy bees begin to fail a little bit. I think that could be a little bit dangerous because you might end up chasing your own tail. You might end up getting knocked out and then hopping back in. And I guess the next question is, how many times do you retry? Okay, a couple of things, like I said earlier, I had some fodder for research. One thing that I talked about in the IPO course is if they're priced too high, they're going to die, okay? And that means that if an IPO comes public at a very high level, a lot of times they don't leave enough meat on the bone for all the people that are involved to, to sort of push the thing higher. And those people, I think, get a little upset and end up selling their shares. And there's probably a lot more that goes on, but just from uh, empirical research, from looking at charts, it seems like a lot of times, if they're priced too high, they're they're going to die. Now, one thing that I never really thought about tremendously until I started using stock charts charts a few years back is that what would happen if you looked at the pre-market level, meaning where the price was set versus where it actually comes public. And I think a lot of people who are on the hook before it comes public, if it gaps higher from the, or technically, I guess it's not a gap, but if it's, I guess it's a gap, if it gaps higher from that pre-market price where they set the price, then a lot of those people who were fortunate in this case to get it pre-market will be looking to flip out fairly quickly. And it creates a supply situation. So coin. Big anticipated IPO. This is Coinbase, and they are a crypto exchange. I have an account with them. They don't have margin. I wish they had margin. <laughs> you know, I love margin until things start going south. Then I hate it. You know, it's, it cuts both ways. Obviously, leverage. But it was set to come public at 250, according to StockCharts.com. Came. It opened at what about uh, 385, 390. Ran up a little bit to 430, and then immediately came back in. So about 200 points, round numbers or so, from where it was set to come public and where it came public, maybe 150 or so. But you can see pretty big move on the open, and then it came back in. And so far, as you can see, it's not doing so hot in here. And that's why, ideally, you want to wait for five days for an IPO. And admittedly, I was a little anxious on this one, thinking that I might see what happened on day one and maybe look for an intraday trade. Not that I would recommend doing that. Seems like any time I try to get in before day five, after preaching, don't get in before day five, I seem to get burnt. I don't know if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy or what. But I'm sort of glad, as I think I said yesterday, I've been absolutely swamped lately. And I'm sort of glad that. I missed the actual open in the last, in at least the last, uh, the, I missed the open in 30, 45 minutes of this, enough time for it to begin to implode. And it just went straight down on, on the 14th, which was yesterday. Isn't that crazy? I can't believe it's 15th already. Now, some more fodder for research, as I alluded to earlier, keeping by bees on a short leash. So this was the one we talked about a little while ago. And I stopped out in my more active account and my, my big cash account, I ended up keeping the shares. I'm a little bit more lenient there, give everything a little bit more wiggle room. And of course, follow the system a little bit more to a T there. I try to get a little cute sometimes in my trading account and sometimes it works and sometimes I get burned on that. But your new closing high would be right where that buy arrow is, as you can see. And one possible thing to do if you do bail early on these, and sometimes they sometimes they fake you out in a buy at B and then implode and you never have to get back in. And that was my initial sort of empirical research with these things that I talked about it probably about a year ago or so in the Facebook group. And I haven't made any anything official there. I think probably the best thing to do is more 
of a hands-off approach longer term so you don't miss these occasional big winners like this. You start messing around a little bit and get a little too cute, you can get into trouble. So this one, eh, it pulled back almost enough to where I could say, yeah, you probably should have gotten out, or I could understand why you got out, why you got out of it. And that was kind of my reason, like, oh, I think it's pulled back enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and bail out, free up some margin, so I can lose some money on some of these day trades. <laughs> anyway, so I did buy back in on this one, and that's one thing too is. Uh, I think it was Churchill. Churchill would probably be a really good trader because he once said that success is being able to move from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. Now, you don't want to do that all the time in trading, but if you have a plausible plan, and plausible is a key word in that sentence, and plan is too, I guess, key phrase, then by all means, it's okay to get beat up a little bit and then come right back. Just don't revenge trade. I guess that's fodder for another show. Now, anytime that I am on the final bar or listen to the final bar with Dave Keller, I learn a lot. And as I said before, Linda Rasky is one of those persons where I don't listen to her too much anymore because anytime I listen to her, I find myself kind of quoting what she says and, and I just pick up so much from her. And I'm just a huge fan of Linda. And that's one reason why I haven't really listened to a whole lot lately, because you know I, I end up quoting so much that people start quoting me as me being original thought. I'm like, no, Linda said these things. Anyway, I find Dave Keller the same way. Dave Keller knows everything in the world. He was head of technical analysis for Fidelity for quite a while. And now he's head of, um, I forget his exact title over there, but head of technical research at stockcharts.com, and I think he has some other positions too, or titles, I should say. Anyway, I was on the final board yesterday. Good show. Uh, check it out, and I'm looking forward to him getting live again, and, and I want to start watching these every day on the close because I learned so much from him, and then just the market recap he does is just so thorough. It's just it's really excellent. So let me just give a, a shout out to my brother from another mother, Dave Keller. He's a fellow member of the AAPTA, and I think that's probably where we met and uh, got into a little trouble here and there, but that's another story. It's in New Orleans. <laughs> anyway, he yesterday showed growth versus value, and there's so many things you could do with stock charts that's, that's just really neat and really cool. And I forget about these things sometimes, but you could take any symbol, add a colon, and put another symbol behind it, and it'll give you a relative strength chart, okay? So when this thing's rising, it means growth is doing well. And when this thing is tanking, it means growth is doing poorly versus value and value is doing well, okay? So one of those numerator denominator things, okay? So you could see here, we had Landry light to the downside, meaning that the highs were less than the moving average. And this is a 30 day EMA. And then we had Landry Light to the upside over here. Landry Light is just simply counts the number of bars displayed as a histogram, not magnitude. I trick a lot of people with that question. So many people have gotten it wrong under the the methodology course on my website that I'm tempted to to change that question because it just tri trips them up a little bit. And it's not a trick question. It does not measure how far the high is below the moving average, and that's another measurement which might be good for some, some things, maybe a Bollinger Band or something would be better for something like that. But this is just counting the magnitude, but it's displayed as a histogram so you can say, aha, this thing has been in a downtrend or mostly red for a long, long time. So I know that it's in a downtrend. Might be due to a correct, but so far it's in a downtrend. But you can see that that has begun to change when the red went to, to green. By the way, another fodder for research, and I think it's going to behave a lot like a bow tie, is look for markets. And I think uh, we got one coming up that's going to have that pattern, and I'll show you. If not, I'll, I'll show you outright. But when you have a lot of red to the downside and you start getting green, I'd be willing to bet it's probably also a bow tie too, and it does that. But it's kind of a neat pattern. You could, you could see it plain as day when you're looking at it with this, with this histogram down here. Uh, by the way, this daylight or Landry light, as we now call it, thanks to one of you guys, uh, Mike, I think Mike P gave me that name. Thank you, Mike. 
And uh, oh, I've got the uh, I got my shame bell here. Mike sent me a, sh a shame bell. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> shame. So if um, too bad Don's not here. I can shame him. <laughs> you remember when Don used to come to the, the webinars and we'd harass him and kick him out? Oh man, I'm not sure he was here for the webinar. Anyway, long story endless growth once again is outperforming value now will it stick i don't know but i do find this kind of interesting one thing i found interesting tonight is that some of the growth areas that were left behind are now coming back like metals and mining made brand new highs today drugs are trying to kind of recover a little bit and biotech although still in the downtrend trying to recover a little bit so i think this is kind of a neat little chart and you know, maybe one day I should set up all my little charts like he does to where I could just go to the website and see this flat out and don't have to poke around so much. But something kind of cool. And, and again, I always pick up something good from Dave. It's RPG colon RPV. And that gives you the growth over value once again. So once again, growth is doing well, at least for the time being. But you could see it had not been doing well for quite some time. And again, now it's doing well. So something to watch, pay attention to. And I think Landry like kind of dovetails nicely into Dave Keller's research on this. But watch the final bar. He explains what those are a lot better than, than I can. He knows a lot more about them. All right, pyramiding winners. So somebody in the Facebook group had brought up, it was Dakota actually, one of his friends had a little bit different money management style in mind. And I think it's good to kind of noodle with these things, but you gotta be careful you don't go too far into chasing rabbits with all this stuff. And, and I'm gonna flush a few of these things out in just a few minutes, but one of the things was adding on to winners. And I, as you know, believe in scaling out, although I do have something I think that's even better, which I'll show you in just a few seconds, a few minutes. If you are going to add on to a trade, meaning that you buy some stock and then it starts moving in your favor, then you buy some more, then you buy some more, then you buy some more. In other words, pyramiding, make sure your pyramid looks like a pyramid. So buy your biggest position first and then add on to that position if that's what you wanna do as it is profitable. Do not build an inverse pyramid where you buy 100 shares like oh it's kind of working let me buy 200 shares oh it's still working and then 300 500 1000 because what's going to happen on the right is if the market begins to slide a little bit or when the market begins to slide a little bit and especially if you get whacked really hard you're going to be a hurt and pop and and one thing that I'm not sure I just I had a lengthy answer to to the uh, money management topic that I brought up but one of the things is just because something bad happened doesn't mean that it can happen the so-called black swan I got a black swan here yeah I keep this black swan over on my trading desk this is a uh, Jane Dix I should probably get a big one from her but she does she does a lot of birds and then she she got on this uh, sunglass kick or not uh, vintage glasses click kick anyway she's a local artist so if you're going to add on a position just make sure you you don't do an inverse pyramid and the just to close the loop on the black swan or something bad happening sooner or later and it's happened to me a few times once once I was lucky that I was in the right direction uh, we got short of stock and it halved overnight. And that was pretty cool. But sooner or later, you're gonna be in a stock and it's gonna get whacked really hard, like 30, 40% overnight or 50%. And you're gonna, you're gonna be a hurt and pop. Now, as I've given presentations before, if you're doing 2% money management and that stock happens to be a volatile stock, that's actually good, okay? not good that you get whacked, but it's good because if it's volatile, you probably don't have on a whole lot of shares. We've got one right now, potential trade for tomorrow. We have on a 10, we have a 10 point stock. So in a hundred K account, you're only gonna trade 200 shares. So yeah, it's gonna suck if you get whacked on that, but you could survive 
200 shares of a stock getting halved, which would probably come to, what's the math on that? Maybe 10K. So you lose 5K overnight. It would suck, okay? You would drop more than F bomb, but you would live to fight another day. If you had on $50,000 worth of a stock, because it wasn't that volatile, so to speak, and it got half, you would really be a hurting pup. You'd lose 25% of your account. And that's that's pretty hard. That's pretty tough. So Craig and the group brought up something pretty interesting, or at least I think so. He found a video from 2017 that I did, and I couldn't find the slides for it. One day I'm going to scoop up all those slides, and, and so I'll have them. But I did talk about this, I believe, in the methodology part under my website, methodology course. But let's say that you have a nice little pullback and you're like, okay, let's let's buy 200 shares on an entry and it rallies up and we're gonna follow the Dave Landry money management scheme, okay? And we're gonna sell 100 shares, take a little profit, put a little money in our pocket, okay? Pulls back again, begins a rally, we add on 100 shares, Okay, so now we're back to 200, 100 plus 200 minus 100 is 100 plus 100. Now we're back to 200, okay? And rinse and repeat, okay? So this is actually a total number here. Actually, it should be plus 100, but it's 200 total because you went from 200 to 100, and now you're back to 200, okay? This doesn't happen often. I'll show you an example in a few minutes of... of case where it would have worked out swimmingly. You don't want to go in with a really big position when you do these add-ons. You probably don't want to go any bigger than what you would have than half of what you originally traded. So in this case here, if you're putting on 200 shares, maybe just add on 100 shares, put on 1,000 shares, just add on after you flip out. So 1,000, 500, 500 gives you back to 1,000. And just kind of rinse and repeat. And that's kind of a fun thing to do. And that's one way to kind of beat the system I will personally do this, okay? If I see a setup that if I were seeing it for the first time, even though I'm already long, even though I'm already taking profits, I'll go ahead and take that setup. In other words, if, pretend that I'm just seeing this, this setup for the first time, I would take it. So I kind of did a little mental game. It's like, hey, if I'm just seeing this, would I buy the stock? And usually what happens is when I'm doing my scans, because I'm not looking at the ticker, if I find myself getting excited about a stock, I say, ooh, I like this stock, what is it? I was like, oh, I'm already long that stock, but it might be time for an add-on. Now, to keep things simple in the trading service, and there's a lot of ways, I kind of lay the groundwork with the trading service. And like Dakota's kind of noodling with the muddy management, I think that's great. If you can find a way to make it work better for you, then by all means, okay? And a lot of people do a lot of different things. I know a lot of people will, will take day trades off of the the pullbacks. That's a Russian doll setup, by the way. And I, I I believe in doing that. I think that's a good thing to do. Go ahead and watch the other presentations. And there's things you could do like this swing trade around the core positions. And that's one way to kind of beat the system. And then discretion would be another way. Discretion not in the fact that you pick and choose which ones you're gonna, gonna take, or as, as Greg Morris calls it, the cherry pick. And that's one of the, that's one reason, one of the reasons people lose is they cherry pick signals in general, okay? Provided you got a, a solid signal and you should take every signal, and not that I'm the grand poo buy anything, but I think I do an okay job of finding stocks and finding enough good ones to make it worthwhile. But as I often preach, when people quit the service, I do a little, post interview with him and talk to him a little bit. It's like, well, what happened? Like, I couldn't make any money. It's like, well, geez, we're having a pretty good period now. We had a pretty good run. You know, did you did you get CPE? Did you get ASO? Like, no, I didn't get those. I took that GH piece of crap you recommended. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I got that one too. <laughs> I have those those scores. But you know, the CPE and the ASO and the ARLP and all the other ones would have really made up for it. So that's another problem that I see is the a, is a, is a cherry picking. But anyway, again, I lay the groundwork, you know, take what I do and make it better. I don't actually 
say, okay, we're going to put on 200 shares more or take off 200 shares other than the initial profit target being hit and saying, okay, we, we need to take those shares off. And the reason I don't do that, it just would get too complicated, I think, too fast. But to my more advanced clientele, by all means, the swing trading around the core positions, great way to do things. I think discretion, like on a stop nick or a near miss, or if you get do get whacked overnight in something, use an opening gap reversal to help mitigate your losses, stuff like that. Just take the groundwork I lay and make it better. Make it your own. All right, a couple of random thoughts. Whenever somebody presents a new methodology or a new technique or something, keep in mind there are no secrets to trading, at, le at least none that I'm keeping, and I don't think anybody else has anything either. And a lot of people have come to me over the years and say they have all these great things, and I'm like, I could shoot holes in it. It's, it's easy from the outside looking in to say, you know, that might be a bit of an anthill type of strategy. And hell means you build, you make a little, 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 and then one big footprint takes you out, and then you know you start over, you lose a year's worth of profits in one one day, and then you have to start over, rinse and repeat. And here's the here's the other thing that I think if there were some secrets, I'm pretty sure that someone I know personally would have it. When I first doing my started my stock chart show. I was worried after I think the first show was something I, I I talked about Linda or John Bollinger or or somebody else, and I uh, said, "Geez, I hope it didn't sound like I'm name dropping, but I, I know these people, you know." And uh, they're like, "No, no, 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 no. You're you're there. They expect that you would know these people and these people are your peers." And so, like, okay, you know, but like, you know, and I know like Larry McMillan and and again Linda, just this unbelievable bright minds and i really think somebody like linda or larry would or anybody else that i mentioned would would have found the secret if there was a secret okay now every style will have its nuances as i preach the sun doesn't shine on the same dog's ass every day if you come in in the middle of summer not every summer because every now and then we get a good summer but if you come in the middle i think last summer was okay at all the stay-at-home traders newly formed i think gave us a lot of liquidity and a lot of momentum and a lot they chased a lot of stocks which was great for us but in general summers can be thin and choppy and, and kind of stuff you come in let's say in may and then you watch me chop around for three months and say man this guy sucks <laughs> But the, you know, my my most successful clients are those who do come in during a choppy period and and make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and stick with it. And all of a sudden, bam, we hit the cover off the ball. Those guys are tempered, okay? Their expectations are tempered. They know that there's going to be good times, uh, good times and bad times. The flip side of that, I've had quite a few people come in and like, man, this is great, and. You know, a husband and wife uh, just, you know, own their own business team, actually quit their business because the trading was so damn lucrative. I'm like, I told them when they told me they were doing that. I saw them in person once and they're like, they're like we're going to quit our job. I was like, no, no, believe me, there's going to be drawdowns. So I, I don't know whatever happened to them, but hopefully they're doing OK. One of the first gurus out there to say, hey, you know, sometimes we lose, right? <laughs> well, that reminds me of a good joke, but I can't tell it. We'll have to, we have the retreat someday. We'll have to let some of these things surface. Now, in a choppy market, swing trading makes the most money. And what I'm referring to here, just kind of along the same vein or, or keep it in line with the money management discussion. If you, let's say the swing trade is, is up to your initial profit target, but instead of exiting half your shares, you exit 100% of your shares. So a lot of times market goes up, comes back in. Mark goes up, comes back in, you know, another stock goes back up, comes back in. We have three or four of these or five of these or six of these on the service. And you would have made far more money by exiting 100% of your shares. And people, of course, the emails come, say, Dave, why don't we exit 100%? It's like, no, because we're trying to capture that occasional long-term gain. And that's where the money is, okay? And that's where all that pyramiding all will be fantastic. But you don't know when that's going to happen. In fact, that only happens about 28% of the time so you got to be you got to be careful with that and, and then on the flip side a lot of times 
when we're doing really well, the, the emails are just the opposite. Hey, Dave, why why do we sell some of this? Why don't we just keep 100% of this? It's like, well, we don't know that it's going to turn into this mother of all winter up 400%, 500%. Like uh, I think it was CPE was up over 500% at one point in time. We don't know that. I mean, obviously, we knew that we'd hold on. But hell, you know, if I knew that, you'd never see my fat ass again. And momentum markets, longer term trend following does work best. That's what I was just kind of alluding to. Just kind of get in and stay in and hold on. And and uh, was it Bill Dunn? Ride that bucking Bronco, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you call it something else, huh? I think when you're looking at any type of system, you need to think in terms of what's the worst that could happen. So when Dakota started talking about pyramiding, I, you know, it kind of raised an eyebrow like, whoa, hang on, that's going to have its nuances. Just like if somebody emails, like well, there was somebody recently, and I don't want to throw them under the bus. I'm, I'm hoping they're still in the group and all. I don't, I don't know, but they told me that they weren't. Um, a huge fan of my stuff because they would make it a lot. They were making so much money selling puts that they didn't need my stuff. And I'm like, oh, geez, that, that'll that work until it don't. And, and and that'll work great as long as the market just keeps on keeping on. Unfortunately, if the market tanks and, and you know, we're kind of at nosebleed levels, we could have a serious correction, okay? Even a serious correction could hurt you so badly that you're going to be shaken and stirred and, and you might not be able to come back from that mentally or monetarily. So you got to think in terms of what's the worst can happen. Along those lines, again, I get I get emails all the time from people and they'll present an anthill strategy to me, like selling options or something or selling both sides or something, you know, and it's like, okay, um, I, I think that that's going to blow up characteristic. It's like, ah, oh, it's been working for six months or whatever. It's like, okay, email me in two years and let me know how you're doing. And I've had numerous people send me the first email I tell them that, and I've never had anybody come back to me in two years. But, you know, here's hoping. And, you know, <laughs> experience is what you get right after you need it the, the most. And believe me, I get a lot of experience in this business <laughs> right after I need it the most. So, like I said earlier, if you put on a ton of shares, okay, or too many shares relative to your account size or to the to the risk profile, even if even if it's a it's a quote unquote not that volatile stock. Hewlett Packard's my favorite example of this. Kind of a sleepy, stodgy, old, boring company. And then the CEO decides to make a pass or whatever he did to his secretary, who was an ex-soft porn star. I did all the research, believe me. I, you know, it's kind of hard to explain your browser history <laughs> on all this. But anyway, you know, Hewlett Packard got just absolutely creamed overnight. So just because something bad hasn't happened doesn't mean that it won't happen as, uh, what's his name, Talib said, you know, there, there, black swan. <laughs> so this reminds me, the keeping a black swan on my trading desk reminds me that some bad things can happen, okay? And the other thing is, think in terms of a bad, what, what could happen is if your strategy is any type of anthill nuance, what's the, what's the old saying, be willing to, I don't want to mess it up, but what's the saying? Like, be, be willing to kill your baby or kill your darlings or whatever. And that's where I have to, every now and then, because it's my baby, I've been working on this thing for 30 years, right? That I, every now and then I have to stop and, and be willing to say, especially with somebody who brings in something else or something ancillary or, or a little bit different, I need to think, okay, well, maybe I'm not seeing everything because I'm so... I'm so I'm right here and I'm not opening my eyes up. And so I, I I'm guilty of that sometimes. I think we all are. But if you have an ant heel strategy, you need to open your eyes. All right, we've been talking about profit centers lately. As I said recently, it's ancillary profitable techniques, profitable keyword in that sentence. Ideally, non-correlated core methodology or non-correlated markets. So I just want to go through Landry Light pullbacks real quick. I went through them yesterday in more detail in my Trading Simplified show, which will be on the website on Friday. But Landry Light pullbacks, we're just simply looking for Landry Light, meaning lows are greater than the moving average, ideally about 20 bars. But if a market really takes off, I think even like five or 10 bars would be adequate. And then we're looking for a pullback to the moving average. Now in this particular case, this is ASO Academy. 
Uh, I recommended and traded this as a first deep retracement. And then after the fact, I noticed that it was a Landry light pullback. So first deep, deep retracement, big sharp trend higher, followed by a deep retracement. And I think one of those earlier was that, was it uh, ZH we talked about? If you zoom it in, the move looks a lot more impressive. It ran from 1250 up to 18 and change, or 1150 to 18 and change, and then it began to implode a little bit. But in these cases, with these first deep retracements, you can get a really nice reversion to the mean pop out, and it could help get your swing trade started. In this particular case, it started to do that, but then unfortunately it came back in, but then it took off again. And that's why you have to have a plan in place, and you can't bail at the first signs of adversity, okay? The market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people, and the market will do the obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. As I, I think I say those every week, I got that from Linda and she got it somewhere else. See what I said? See what I mean? It's like I, you know, get around people like uh, Linda and, and David and Greg Morris and, you know, feel like I'm on rapper room. <laughs> hey, I'm name dropping again. And it begins, Larry Millen, and it begins to rub off. Notice we have nice Landry light here, and then it once again pulls back to the moving average. This is a great time, okay, for an add-on type of trade. If you miss the initial thrust higher, the, the initial first deep retracement or the first Landry light pullback, then that would be a good time to get in. So you can look at that indicator below, which is really more of an illustrator. It's just kind of showing you what's already in the chart, okay? And then you could also draw a big blue arrow higher. Entry there, stop down below, and then trailing stop would look something along those lines. Partial profits on that, if you were doing an add-on trade or a standalone trade would be somewhere in that area here for about five or six points. Now this is the ARLP. Now this is what I was saying earlier. This is something that, you know, this is what I love to teach because I learn a lot myself. And it also helps me during a trading day. It's kind of like, okay, what if my my peers and my peeps were like next to me watching me trade? <laughs> you know, would I be embarrassed? And would I, you know, it's pretty easy to make those shame trades. Shame! <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> wow, Mike. You can put some tape in there or something. Shame. When nobody's watching, and that's that's the other thing too. Without backing too much into trading psychology and letting freshman psychology rear its ugly head, the fact that we have no controls. Okay, there's a lot of shit we get away with because nobody tells us what to do. We don't have controls, and most of your jobs, there's a lot of things you can't get away with because there's certain parameters to keep you from hurting yourself, hurting others, losing money, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, even even in trading, there's one guy in in these these small to slightly bigger firms that all he does is he watches everybody's risk all day. And sometimes I wish I had that guy. He, I wish he'd come walking over and say, "Dave, you know, if you could stop all these day trades, you're going to be down about five thousand dollars, and you know, you got a lot going on here, and then you got these options over here that you're not paying attention to, and." And they're going to expire worthless if you don't, you know, it's like, you know, we don't have that luxury, okay? Maybe we need to figure out a way to make that happen. You know, somebody start thinking about that. Anyway, so the other thing that teaching does, other than make me want to be a better trader so I can teach better, right, is I'll, I'll see things. And, and maybe this might be an interesting pattern. Let's say you've got a lot of downside Landry Light followed by a quick flip to the upside, okay? And this is something I think that's worth looking into. Not when you have a little Landry Light to the downside and a little green to the up, a little green, little red, little green, little red. That's a choppy market. But if you have a market that's downtrending and makes an abrupt reversal, okay, making this little pattern here, we'll have to come up with a name for that. Kind of a, I don't know what that looks like, but it's something, right? It's kind of a bow tie looking thing. But I think that could be a good little trend turn pattern when you see lots of red followed by lots of green. And I don't know what the parameters are, but let's just say 10 and 10. 10 bars of red followed by 10 bars of green. You might just have a bona fide trend turn on your hands. 
Anyway, longer term downtrend is evidenced by the red arrow here, as evidenced by the Landry light to the downside. And then notice the lows are now above the moving average. So you've got nice upside Landry light. The stock pulls back to the moving average. Now, this is quite a few days at a pullback, but I'm a little bit more lenient with commodity related stocks. This is a coal company, I, I believe. And entry here, stop down here, initial profit target up here. And it was kind of exciting. It ran up, it hit the initial profit target, and then now it just it's just kind of died out. Okay. It's kind of rotting, so to speak, right? But am I gonna exit? No, you know why I'm not gonna exit? Because my trading plan for the service was not to exit. Now, if I was personally in this stock without recommending it first, I might have gotten bored with it by now, okay? Much easier to follow a plan if you know somebody else is also following a plan. By the way, if you go to DaveLander.com slash archives, you can review the, I would say 90% of the trades or 95% of trades that I mentioned here. And then you can also see some stinkers. If, if I fail to mention them, you can go see them warts and all. And if you're new to the service, the recent archives are down here. The older archives are at DaveLander.com slash archives. By the way, one thing I would recommend, and I probably should do a whole show or a piece of the show just on this, keep the old Landry list, okay? My daily call list, keep the old ones because it might not set up perfectly and it might be something like that ARLP, which kind of no longer fit the methodology in some ways because of the number of days in the pullback, although I did still like it, okay? So keep those older Landry lists. And I think there's a lot of good stuff in there if I say so myself. And the reason I'm saying it is, is I've got one client and I've had more than one client over the years. They just swear by the older Landry list and they keep an eye on the last week or two. And, and there's a lot of good stocks that turn into great momentum stocks. They don't always fit the methodology as far as the pullbacks and all these other things, but sometimes they turn into some really great momentum stocks. And sometimes they set up subsequently to the original thing. All right, let's shift gears here. We'll take a look at the overall market and all. Before we do that, I want to take a look at the at the altcoins. So let me get that up and running. Now, the reason I wanted to show you the Landry light is because some of these altcoins will set up nicely as the as Landry light pullbacks. Okay. Now, uh, let me also get the ACP platform up and running. What's cool about the ACP platform is they have I got a little stream deck here. It's really cool. Oops, come on. Now, I use a lot, of, as I often preach, I use a lot of tools in my business and I, I went ahead and bought a year subscription to TradingView, I like it. If you're interested in it, you can go to my website, I have a link for it there. By the way, a lot of links to stuff can be simply found by going to my homepage and then right here, learn how to trade the stock market properly. But anyway, I went out, I, I go out and find a tool I need and then I talk to people that I know like stock charts and say, hey guys, could y'all get me this? And, and and they work really hard and they're very accommodating. In fact, they did the plug-in, which is down here, which does the Landry light and all. Anyway, long story endless, where I'm going with all this is they did start adding all coins and they have about 150 more that they're going to add, okay? And the other thing cool about what Stock Charts has done is they also put the, or they have the relative strength. You can put that in here or just see the biggest gains overnight, I guess. So. Two things we're going to look for in the altcoins is number one, we're going to look to play relative strength. And number two, we're going to look to play something like Landry Light pullbacks. Now, if you look off to the right of this chart, these are the ones that I'm currently long, okay? And they have. If it's red, it means I have a stop in place. If it's blue, it means it's something that interests me. Now, one thing I was saying last week at Bandcamp in the 
Trading Simplified show is the if you the, again the two ways you trade them are the relative strength and, and something like Landry like pullbacks. But the question is, how do you know if you're in a Landry if you're in a relative strength momentum market? Well, if you look off to the right of your screen and you see a plethora of green right now, okay, like we're seeing here, then you're in a momentum type of market. And one of the stocks, John Z in the in the Facebook group, we were talking last week or so, and he saw that I was long one of these Bitcoins or whatever, one of these cryptos or shit coins as we call them, S-H-Y-T. And he he bailed out on one that he was long and bought the one that I was long. And then he started losing money and he's like, oh, dang, you know, that other one's going up and now this one's going down. And then I said, John, these things are like a bus. You know, another one will come along really soon. Now, not all the time, okay, but when you see numbers like this over here, probably need a better color than that, right? Then you know that you're in a momentum type of market. And one of the best things you could do is just come in and trade these altcoins and then try to make sure that you're in the top, let's say five, or you got a few of them in the top five. Now I'm also trading pullbacks and other things, okay? So you might be saying, well, how come you're not in all of them? It's like, well, you know, you gotta give them a little room to run and maybe I've gotten into them a few days ago when they were doing really well. But nonetheless, you could see if we sort them by symbol, okay, I'm sorry, by flagged, okay, and every one of these, I'm long, and every one of these, I have a stop, and that's why it's it's red, okay? So this one's up 50%. That's doggy coin. MKR, you know what they do? I have no idea. It's going up, though. ETC, Ethereum Classic, look at that, 31%. I feel like tiny Elvis. Look at it. Look at that shit going, it's huge. TRX, 17%. You can see these things are moving nicely. Now, this, this is one I traded out of a pullback, okay? And you can see I've been playing the breakouts in the pullbacks in these things. So let's just take a look, and we'll just go through a few of these. I don't know if we have enough time to get through all of them, but let's just start looking through these, and let's just look for something like Landry Light pullbacks. We already know which ones are making new highs and headed higher, right? Like this A to ADA. Let's see if we could find something that's setting up as a pullback. That was kind of interesting, but it's it's kind of all over the place. But it, it sort of kind of reminds me of an IPO, and and that's that's another thing. There's some more fodder for research, okay? And I'm kind of excited about it as I'm thinking about it. You know, maybe these new ER coins as they come out, and I think John Z was talking about this, could have a, an IPO characteristic, meaning that they take off and then have a first deep retracement. And then you play that little rally out of a pullback. So ANKR, it's what's that, 17 cents? You know, it's only 17 cents. So buy a couple thousand of them. <laughs> now, this one's a little funky, but it did go up, rally nice. It did come back and tag the um, 30 EMA. Now, one thing, as I said recently, I haven't completely wrapped my head around the volume, okay, to make sure they're thick enough to trade. That's one thing that I, that it doesn't really matter, I think, now because I'm trading fairly small size in these things. But I think as my account hopefully continues to grow and as I begin to up my size, it'll be more and more important to pay attention to volume. Bat, okay, look at this one. A nice rally here, pulled back to the EMA. They found out the bat didn't cause the coronavirus, right? So took off nicely from that. Nice little pullback here. Didn't make it all the way back to the EMA, but so what? Nice little pullback nonetheless, nice little rally higher, okay? So you should be able to look at these, and if you're like me, you should start getting excited. And if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what does, but look at this, crazy uptrend, nice pullback, crazy thrust higher. Of course, you need to use money management. There's Bitcoin, as we've said, as I've said quite a bit. Bitcoin is kind of the poster child for some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Landry Light pullbacks. Look at this, back here. 18,000, nice little pullback. We talked, I know we talked about this in the Facebook group. You can go and look at the, the post, Dave Landry Trend, Dave Landry's Trend Traders is my Facebook group. You have to be at least a gold member though to participate and that's to keep the riffraff out, half kidding. 
See, there's some of these in here, like PRV. I wanted to buy this one earlier today, but I'm long so many other ones, I don't have any room in my account to buy another one. And I like the ones I'm long so much that I that I don't want to kick any of the ones that I'm long out, okay? Let's just keep going through these. And you can see right now we're back in a momentum market. Now, keep in mind, this changes quickly. I might come in later tonight, right before bed, look at all these things, and before you know it, start flipping out some of these. This one I liked as a pullback. I got long this one earlier today. You can see it's beginning to rally out of the pullback. Looking pretty darn good. Little unorthodox and taking so many days to come down to the, to the 30, but kind of interesting. I'm a little bit more lenient with these as opposed to an established stock because I think that this is still a very inefficient market. Not enough people, not not enough. Not many people know about it. I guess I better quit talking about it. Just enjoy the ride, not tell anybody. But it's not how I operate. You know, it's like I discover something. I'm it's like I was like to buy a deal. Well, I'm to tell anybody about that. It's like I'll put in my IPO course. And then, you know, before you know it, I'm like talking about buys it, buy bees all the time. <laughs> anyway, EOS, momentum market, ETC, momentum market. Now, see, I'd like to have ETH, right? But there's so many other ones that are going up that I want to hang on to. I'm not going to go after Ethereum. Now, here you go, EWT. This looks pretty good, okay? Um, kind of, you know, the, Remember I said they might have like an IPO characteristic, okay? Well, you know, comes public, just implodes, but bases out nicely. This is what I call the fly, die, and maybe fly again. So if I had room right now, I'm telling you right now, I would buy this or maybe put a stop entry right above the market. You know what? And I'd put a stop right below. So buy around 19 and change, stop at 16. There's your trade right there. Okay, a little breakout happening. Not a huge fan of breakouts, except in markets that have this, I don't know if this is the right word, emergent behavior. Emergent is, isn't like emergent behavior, like when birds fly around, maybe that's the wrong thing, but have the potential to emerge as emerging markets. Let's see if we can find some. Now, now there's one. Now this is this isn't a tremendous trend, but it did catch my eye. Landry light pullback. Okay, not a tremendous amount of Landry light. So this is not a perfect setup, but it's okay. I mean, look at this one. Look, nice thrust higher, pullback to the EMA. Bam. You know why am I showing you this? <laughs> isn't it awesome? Another pullback, I like this one. Notice I have the blue here. Blues are ones that I want to buy if I had more cash in my crypto accounts. I was long, I was actually long Link, I think, and, and flipped it out and bought uh, Doggy Coin or one of those things. What do we have here? Look at that. Nice look. I'm tiny Elvis once again. Nice thrust higher. Okay, pull back to the EMA. And in some cases, you could put your stop, going back to that one, you could put your stop a little bit below that EMA and just try to hold the EMA. Look at that. If you, you could have held the EMA and this thing, I mean, everything works better to trend. I'll give you that. But this breakout here didn't take out the EMA. Nice lander light here, a little tag of the EMA, takes off again, tags the EMA, takes off again, tags the EMA. You know, rinse and repeat, hopefully. Well, actually, I'm not long yet, so. Now, this one looks good. Hey, I'm long. Okay, didn't make it all the way back to the EMA, but that's okay. I'll play pullbacks too. Nice little pullback. Okay, this is a, what is it? Three birds crapping on a wire pattern, followed by an inverted baby on a stick, whatever the candle people call that. LTC, I'm long this one on a momentum play. Man, it looks good. Okay, I've got other positions on, so I can't take this. But uh, that's a nice little breakout right here. This is one I curse because I don't think I think I went to sleep and this thing like doubled overnight. It came back and was back to where wasn't back to where I bought it because I think I bought this breakout here. But I was a little bummed out that I didn't take advantage of that spike higher. I mean, look at that trend. That trend is huge. Okay, it's up forty percent in one day. Little red means I'm long with a stop. MLN looks okay. You know, it's kind of took off. It's a little choppy in here. It might be one of these thinner ones that we have to be careful with. And, and I'll figure that out someday. And if you guys can uh, wrap your head around that and let me know, um, 
leave a comment below and, and, and maybe I could research them a little bit further. But yeah, that one does look a little thin based on that number there. Now see, this one came public and it just died out. It's kind of looking like a lot of the IPOs. A lot of IPOs come public and die out. I gave a presentation a while back and I talked about IPOs and some guy saying, so you're saying to short them because they all go down? I was like, no, no, I'm just saying that don't buy them if they go down. It's kind of like the old Will Rogers saying, buy stocks that go up, they don't go up, don't buy them. Now he's being tongue in cheek, but with these altcoins, you could pretty much do that. With IPOs, you could pretty much do that, okay? Now here's another one, a little bit on the thin side, but you can see so far so good. Nice little trend higher, nothing to do there. That one's okay. This one looks good, okay? See, I got a little blue flag on it. Nice thrust higher, followed by a pullback. Okay, didn't come all the way to EMA, but that's okay. Nice little pullback is something we like to trade too. Let's see what else is out here, okay? Quantum, quantum is one I want to be long, but I'm long all these other ones, okay? I just don't have any room for another one. But you know what's interesting is things do change fast. Again, I think I just said that a few minutes ago, but not to beat the dead horse. I could easily come in tonight, later tonight, and and start getting stopped out of these or start getting knocked out of these. And and before you know it, I'm back to 100% cash. But right now, it's pretty good. We're having a good run here. SC, I've done fairly well in this one before. Like I think I played a pullback way, way, way back. I mean, a breakout way back here. And then I think I played this breakout, and I know I played this pullback here. And it may have gotten knocked out or more excited about something that's going straight up in more recent times. And see, that's the thing too. You gotta be careful because if the relative straight market does not continue and you're not hanging on to these, these core related positions, these pullbacks or whatever, then when they take off again like this, you're gonna be in other ones and you're not gonna reap the benefits of that. But right now it's almost like, like I told John, you know, these things are like a bus. An another one's gonna come along in 10 minutes, just, Get into ones that are working, stay out of the ones that aren't. This was a little extreme, but you could see it, it did blast higher and come back in. I did play this breakout back here, if memory serves. TRX, this is one of my favorites. It, it just, when this thing goes, it goes. And again, you should be getting pretty excited about these. Double top knockout into the 30 EMA back here. Didn't do anything afterwards, but the good news is Sometimes when you start seeing these numbers looking nice and green, you can play a breakout, especially if it's basing and above the 30 EMA or it's recently set up, let's say this breakout was back here somewhere. If it recently set up as a pullback or something into the EMA, sometimes they don't take off right away. Sometimes the market doesn't move on your time frame, which is usually always for me. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. There's the doggy coin. I tried to buy this damn thing back at seven back here. And for some reason I couldn't get the orders off. I think I had the symbol wrong somewhere and I cursed quite a bit, but I finally did get long the doggy coin or whatever they call it, Dodge coin. I mean, I think that thing was total BS and I don't know the whole background on it, but I think somebody made it as a joke and then it, it took off. So who, who cares? It's going up, right? Uh, XMR, you guys know what they do? I, I have no idea. But nice lander like there. Hi, I am long. Okay, I probably got long on this bar here or this bar here, one of these breakout type of bars. And I'll get long again if I get stopped out on pullbacks or if it starts taking off again. Ripple is the one I'm thinking about, not the doggy coin. Ripple, I tried to get long at 70 cents and I couldn't find a broker that would take my order for some reason. I don't know if it's user error or what. I guess I need to find out. But I'm kind of aggravated that I, that I missed this one. But there's enough there's another enough other ones out there. I guess you can't kiss all the women. That's your Bill Cosby with a lot of roofies and or Harvey Weinstein. And badly for those guys though. Look look at that Zcash. It's huge. Okay, look at that. I mean, you got a TKO right here. Nice little entry. You could have put a stop here. Okay. And I don't want to make this in hindsight. Look at all the ones that I'm long, okay? And I'll I'll give you a snapshot of those before we we finish up. So if you wanted to take a screenshot, okay, mark it down, okay? Every, the ones in blue, I am not long. The ones in red, make sure there's none below it. Okay, nope. 
the ones all in red means that I'm long with a stop. I'm still working on my flagging system, but I think I pretty much got it down. So let's just see what happens. And then next week, in fact, I'll take a screenshot myself. I can do it. I don't know if I can do it on the fly. No, I can't. Well, I'll, I'll get it tomorrow because it's recorded, right? And we'll see what happens next week. And and I'll walk you through them. And might fail miserably, and I hope not, but I hope we do really well. But as you can see, this this should get you excited. If that doesn't get you excited, then I don't know. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be trading, maybe, huh? All right, before I forget, let's shift gears. Let's take a look at the overall market. And let's take a look at some sectors. You guys want to start asking about individual stocks? Feel free to do so now. All right, let's take a look at the P's. SP 500, nice day today, beginning to accelerate higher. I didn't like this drifting action that we've had lately, but now, bam, winning. In fact, as I said in the market a minute, I thought we were going to start correcting from this little bit of an outside day we had yesterday. Look at the moving averages, uptrend proper order, nice Landry light above the moving averages, all three of them actually. NASDAQ composite, winning. So far, at least up a percent and a third plus today, just shy of all time highs, especially on a closing basis. Closing high is right there. We're just in a skosh, as somebody used to say below it. I actually have a, a dirty term for, for something that's really little. <laughs> we used to use it in the sailboats, but I can't say that tonight. PG 13, right? Uh, it's only, it's less than a half percent away from all time highs. My only concern is when a market recovers from fairly low levels like this, by the time it gets all the way back to its old highs, very overbought, and then we have a bit of a double top working. Keep in mind with a double top, it never plays out like it does in the in the classic textbooks, okay? So we had a top here and then a potential top here. And the, if you're reading a textbook on double tops, it's, they say it looks like this, right? Actually, this peak, just imagine that peak was there. But sometimes they stall short of it, and sometimes they blast through it and then come back in, okay? And then sometimes, obviously, they keep on going. So you got to pay attention, but don't get too excited because it could be building a double top. It's just something that you have to keep in the back of your mind. And, and I think it's important to come up with plausible scenarios, okay? So when it happens, you're not that surprised, and you don't get too caught up in being a bull or being a bear. Take a look at the Rusty. Rusty, as you can see, sideways arrow lately. Had an okay day today. Gapped up and came in a little bit. Mostly sideways, but it is above its bow tie moving averages. And they are in proper order if you squint your eyes. But I would call this sideways for now. Forget about the moving averages for now, unless it starts to break away from them. Energies are losing a lot of steam in here. As you can see, they've kind of rolled over. They're going sideways. Even though they're back above the moving averages, I, unless I had the mother of all setups here, I would pass on any new energy setups. But Dave, you're long CPE. Well, that's okay because we got long that a long time ago and maybe energies will consolidate and take off again. Kind of like metals and mining, right? Metals and mining looked a little dubious not that long ago, but now they're hitting new highs with vigor. And they're finally getting a little help from gold and silver, which has been wide and loose. But gold beginning to wake up nicely today. I kind of watched an anguish as JNUG went up all day long, and I didn't, I forgot about it, didn't, wasn't really paying attention when it took off, and it was, I felt that it might have gone too far to jump in, and, and obviously it kept on going. Silver, you could see white and loose and all over the place, but uh, finally began to try to come out of its range a little bit, so that's certainly a good thing. Foods at new highs. Drugs, look at that, okay? Drugs were looking pretty questionable just recently, but today up one and a third percent plus, okay? And notice the moving averages are quickly flipping over to uptrend proper order, not quite there yet, but getting there. A couple of days of Landry light, so that's kind of interesting. So wanna pay attention there. Biotech, I think, is still in trouble, but boy, we had one hell of a day today, huh? up over a percent and a half. And you can see the moving averages are trying to come together. So that's kind of interesting. Still in a downtrend, I wouldn't rush out and buy them yet, but that's certainly encouraging. Now take a look at health services. You know, it's a tiny Elvis market. Look at this market, it's huge. <laughs> I was trying to get a little tiny Elvis 
together for you guys. But uh, I realized that that was a rabbit hole I was beginning to go down and getting. <laughs> but I'll, I'll eventually give me a little tiny Elvis. If, if you guys got a little tiny Elvis you want to uh, send me, that'd be great on a, a transparent background, something that's uh, copyright without copyright. <laughs> and we'll put tiny Elvis on these charts. But tiny Elvis say, look at that trend, it's huge. And you can see accelerating higher. I mean, overbought, yeah, but still up two and almost a quarter percent. Notice the moving average is spreading out nicely, uptrend proper order, that's looking pretty good. Manufacturing, closing at all time highs. Take a look at retail, you know, retail, beautiful bow tie, textbook bow tie, textbook top, nice sell off here, and then went right back up, pretty amazing. It said nosebleed levels though, a little dangerous to jump in midstream here, but boy, so far, so good there. So a little mixed here and there, but for the most part, things are improving. And I think we can have a market with both value and momentum for a while. Now keep in mind, usually it's one or the other, especially if you look at that chart that I showed earlier and then watch David's show, David Keller's show. So you can understand a little bit further what you're looking at. Hardware new high, but I think uh, right now we're starting to see a lot of sectors all kick it into gear. There was a lot to worry. It, you know, it's so interesting. Just yesterday and day before, there was a lot more to worry about than there is today. And that's why I say let's take things one day at a time. Computer software, brand new highs. Any uh, stock picks you guys want to talk about before I'm getting ready to shift gears and do that? Semiconductors. Semiconductors, just a little concerned about semiconductors. They're doing pretty good shorter term. A little sideways in here as of late. They have to take out this prior little peak, okay? Could be a little bit of double top action, but hey, one day at a time. Something you've heard that before. And then finally, Bonds decided to wake up today. I was watching, I, I, I'd forgotten that I did this. There's so much stuff I do, and I just need to follow up on. But I, I made a watch list of those Direction funds or whatever you call them, and some other of those double leverage, triple leverage things. And I was watching the relative strength on them today. And to my surprise, bonds popped up. TMV, is that or TMF? TMV? TMV? No, TMF. Yeah, I was surprised to see like sleepy old bonds. Let's take a look at the, a 15 minute chart. Oops, that's a half hour. All right, URA, George, you got it, buddy. Yeah, so I did have a bit of a gap hoping, but it, it it did have some nice follow through. So that's pretty impressive move for bonds, okay? Believe it or not. George, we'll start about URA, URA, keep them coming. It's uranium and uranium can be a, a biatch, <laughs> you know? Uh, when it goes, it's like butter, like back here, I think I was long, you, 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 you. And uh, let's take a look at that. You, 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 you. You can see it's just kind of sideways in here. Nothing that, to do there. It kind of looks like uranium itself. So it's it's just going sideways. But hey, you know, that's that's a good one to watch. I'm glad you brought it up. I should probably put this in my uh, in my ETF watch list for a possible play. It does have a little bit of that three drives to a high look to it. Nothing magical about that pattern. As I often say, every top will probably have a three drives to a high or a bow tie or whatever, but every three drives to a high won't be a top and every bow tie won't be a top too. You know, I've got to knock my own stuff while I'm at it. I'm not a huge fan of three drives to a high, you know, because you could probably go in any market and it'll do three drives to a high 20 times in a row. And then that 21st time, you'll be like, aha, look at that, three drives so high. <laughs> it's kind of like the Fibonacci people. You know, you ever see, you see those charts like, you know, it's like their charts will look, I won't have enough time to do it. But their charts will look like this, you know. They have about a thousand lines on their chart, you know, and then one low hit one of the lines and they go, ah, look, you see? <laughs> it's magic. No, it's not, Danny. No, do you don't, Danny. Okay, uh, John, good good call. This one, if you had to go after uranium, this one looks a little bit better. Now, keep in mind, uranium is cray-cray, okay? Everything's got a cray-cray lately, huh? But this one this one looks okay, all right? Because it's uranium. You got you to gotta cut it some slack, okay? 
let's put the uh let's put the let's get the 30 in there and see where yeah look at that so it's a landry light pullback and it's a bit of a double top knockout ish looking pattern so it looks okay and i'd say it looks a lot better than the ura if you had to pick one pick this one um i'm a little on the fence on whether or not i'd go after it just because it's a little bit kind of wide and loose in here but yeah you can't argue that the trend is up i prefer if uranium itself was looking a little bit more bullish okay but yeah john good uh good call on that one glad you brought it up we need to put that one on our watch list see what happens all right any more Well, while we're in an impasse, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. We're getting getting our numbers to a decent number here, not nearly as much as we used to. I thought I was going to have to upgrade my account for, for a while there, but we have a thousand max possible. But uh, we're getting it back. Uh, check my website again on Thursdays. Shows are usually, unless it's a holiday or if COVID's kicking my ass or something, <laughs> but usually almost almost every week, Thursdays at uh, six Central, seven. Eastern time, and once you sign up for one show, you'll you're signed up for every other show that I do forever. All right, again, I want to thank everybody for coming. And anything unanswered, bring it up in Facebook. If you're not in the Facebook group, you could reach me at DaveLander.com/contact. Everybody have a great weekend. If we will talk again, and may the trend be with you.